So Voronax for Rhino 6 is finally out and if you want to make your own plugins, check this out. So before I show you how Voronax in Rhino 6 works, I just wanted to tell you that if you want to create your own cool plugins like Voronax or any of our other plugins, I can teach you how to do it. And if you go to proarchitect.teachable.com, you will see already some of the courses there, the Rhino Developer C++ course or the Rhino Developer C Sharp course. Uh, you get small C++ and C Sharp basic courses with them. And in the future, you will get to see a lot of other courses on similar subjects. You can enroll the, in the course. You can see all the explanation here. You have more than 10 or 11 hours of video. The first couple of videos are free where you can check out if you are able to download the software and create your own plugin. And afterwards, there is a lots of lots of uh, videos explaining all the basics of the development for Rhino so that you can create your own plugin. Now, that being said, check that out. All the links will be provided to you. And let's see how the Voronax for Rhino 6 works. Now, if you used Voronax for Rhino 5, it is very similar to that. There's just a couple of new things. You may have noticed if you used Rhino 6 that you cannot drag and drop the plugins anymore. You actually have to use the plugin manager to install it. That's the one small little thing. You have to find your file. Once you do do that and you install your plugin, you just type in if Voronax like before and you will see basically the same dialogue with a couple of new stuff. So let's just create one simple surface. Let us rebuild it to let's say five, five fields. Let's move it a little bit to make something interesting. Turn off the grid. Okay, so I will select this poly surface. I won't go into uh, in-depth explanation of how Voronax works. That's why you have the old PDF from the Voronax for Rhino 5. Everything is there. I will put some random points. I will generate Voronax, let's say 100 random points. And this is the image that is probably already familiar uh, for you with some of the Voronax cells. What is actually new? The new thing is that when you extract geometry, you have all these options in, uh, in the extraction part of the, of the dialogue. I will extract at the moment everything. So C's, joints, member cells, as you see here, they all are separated in uh, different layers. And when I was working for a very interesting project, the pavilions, the NABU pavilions, you can see that I used my Voronax plugin and I updated it to, to do these cells in 3D somehow. And I kind of decided to leave this into this in this version of Voronax for Rhino 6 and you will be able to use it. How? You see here that you have a Voronax cells button. You will need that button that will open a new dialog and you will need this layer Voronax cells. In this layer, all of the cells are saved as polygons, as you can see here. Let me for a second select all those and isolate that selection and you will see that there, there are polygons. If some polygons are missing, you can actually draw them, in, draw them in by hand. And if you want to, you can draw some additional ones by hand here and use them further in these calculations. So I will unhide everything. I will open this dialog that's called Voronax cells. Here you will se have select cell polygons. So I will simply select everything <coughs> that is on this layer and I will have my cells selected. It says here 100 cells selected. So what's happening here? There is some slider here. If I start moving it, nothing is happening. Why? Because I need to generate my mesh. Once I do, you will see that something will be happening. So here you will have a simple mesh to close your cells. Okay, it's not so interesting, so fun. It's useful actually if you want to close your mesh and use it for different purposes, but not so interesting. What I did for these pavilions is created another level of subdivision. And within this level of subdivision, I created a depth. So you can put a number, let's say 10 here, for the depth of the cells. You can even flip that if you want to. And then you can play around with it a little bit. So you can have the depth to your cells. And there is a third level of subdivision here. 
so that you can have kind of a frame around your cells. I did that for that project because then I used this mesh, I exported it and I uh, used the Catmo Clark subdivision to smoothen it out. You can do whatever you want with it, follow the same recipe if you want, but this is what you can generate with it. You can play with the depth, you can play with the flipping the rotation and so on and so on. You can examine that on your own. Once you're done, I advise you to create a new layer, call it however you want. Let's say export mesh. You give it some color, let's say orange, whatever. You select it to be current and then you can extract mesh. Now let's close this. Let's select everything that is in this layer. And you will see that I generated here a nice, very interested, Voron interesting Voronex structure. And as I told you, once you, you use some other tools like Catmull Clark subdivision that you can find in some tools, I, you can actually create surfaces that look like this. As I said, everything else in the plugin is the same as in the uh, Rhino 5 version, so you can literally just open the PDF uh, with the explanation, check it out, check out other videos, and everything else will work as well. Write to us when something is not clear or something is not working and we will try to fix it. So have fun with it and a lots of success. Cheers. If you want to create your own cool plugins like Voronax or any of our other plugins, I can teach you how to do it. And if you go to proarchitect.teachable.com, you will see already some of the courses there, the Rhino Developer C++ course or the Rhino Developer C Sharp course. Uh, you will get small C++ and C Sharp basic courses with them. And in the future, you will get to see a lot of other courses on similar subjects. You can enroll the, in the course, you can see all the explanation here. You have more than 10 or 11 hours of video. The first couple of videos are free where you can check out if you are able to download the software and create your own plugin. And afterwards, there is a lots of lots of uh, videos explaining all the basics of the development for Rhino so that you can create your own plugin. Yeah.